Praise the Lord. Thank you, Father. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. We bless you, Father, and just bow before you again. As we come before you to minister your word in righteousness and truth by the spirit of holiness, we thank you, Father, for the spirit of grace and holiness. Thank you, Father. You put my heart in that scripture. A righteous man hateth lying. And that's exactly what you have me deal with when I deal with all these things of, of, from Ralph Stair and James Rice and all the people that follow these perverted speakers that use the word of God but hold it in unrighteousness. So just thank you, Father. Just ask you in Jesus' name to help me throughout these messages today. And we just bless you, saints, because the truth is our shield and buckler. The truth is our defense in this time. And it's an offensive weapon, too. We hold up the shield of faith to quench all the fiery darts of the adversary, but we also use the sword of the spirit when we get up close to the enemy. And that's what God's going to have me do this day, is I get up close to the enemy of enemy of truth. Men like Ralph Gordon Stair, James Rice, and others. Now, some people, they probably don't even know who Ralph Gordon Stair is. They turn on these messages and things, and like I said, I, even on the, I, well, I have the, the uh, as you see, the finalwitness.com as a website, uncensored. Thank God that God gave me an outreach to be able to use that because YouTube and all these other platforms are of the image of the beast. They're setting up the image of the beast, people. You can see it very clearly how they are uh, censoring truth. They call good evil and evil good. Just like Ralph Stair and James Rice have been doing. But I want to start out with the scripture. And then we'll go right into this, uh, what God put on my heart to speak about first in this first message for this day. As in 2 Peter chapter 1, it says, verse 13, he starts out, Yea, I think it me, as long as I'm in this tabernacle, to stir you up by putting you in remembrance, knowing that shortly I must put off this ta my tabernacle, even as the Lord Jesus Christ had showed me. Now, we're going to go to that screenshot, the death of the testator. Because the death of the testator is what we're talking about here. The testimony or te the, the, the words that this false witness, Ralph Stair, has spoke throughout the years from his beginning. He was a devil. He was a liar. Although one thing that he did was he used the word of God. And he learned that. Now I'm going to I'm emphasize again. People out there that don't know who Ralph Gordon Stair is, he is somebody that was raised in the religious world amongst all the charlatan preachers, amongst all the perverters of truth. Throughout the years that he was with them, he learned from them. And then he perfected their perversion in great detail, as we'll get to very shortly. Well, I'm getting to it now. But the point is, is that Ralph Stair it's just like Paul said, marvel not if Satan transformed himself into an age of light. Even so, his ministers, like Ralph Stair, James Rice, uh, Maurice Spencer, Timothy Jones, all these people that still continue to follow the false witness, Ralph Stair, they transform themselves into the ministers of righteousness, whose ends will be according to their works. Period. All right. Now, I just read that, what Peter said, I must put off this, my tabernacle, even as the Lord Jesus Christ has showed me. Oh, what do you think Ralph has done for years? God showed him. God told him. How many times you hear that perversion come out of the man's mouth? God told me. And on all the things he said, God told him were lies because God didn't tell him. So moreover, in 2 Peter, well, I will endeavor that you may be able, after my death or decease, to have these things always in remembrance. 
That ain't what James Rice and company have done there at Overcoming Ministry. They cut out things that should have been put in remembrance of the words that the perverted Ralph Stare said about the coming of Jesus Christ because that is the most important thing to the saints of God in this time we live in, to be prepared for the coming of Jesus Christ, not to be unprepared as Ralph Stare has left the listeners off of his radio broadcast. They are unprepared totally. And you'll see it by the lies that James Rice uses to cover up the lying wonders that Ralph Stare spoke throughout the years. He says, Peter said, Moreover, I will endeavor that you may be after my death or decease to have these things always in remembrance. For we have not followed cunningly devised fables. This is Peter talking. Like Ralph Stare put out, James Rice are continuing to put out. When we made known unto you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but were eyewitnesses of his majesty. You see, Ralph Starr wasn't an eyewitness of the majesty of God, even though he, he lied about what God told him and lied about the word of God. We'll get to these things here now. Um, what I was talking about, uh, uh, James Rice, here, let's listen to these uh, words of perversion between James Rice and Ralph Starr. As we go back and forth, you'll hear it. This is what James said when he first took over the pulpit at the Overcomer Ministry Farm. And the man of God spent his life getting the people ready for the coming of the Lord. Are we not going to be ready? Are we going to dishonor him? They already dishonored his words because they hide him. They cover him up. He prepared, he spent his lifetime preparing the people for the coming of the Lord? Uh, no. He prepared a people to be disillusioned, to be confused, to not be prepared for the coming of the Lord. There's so many things that go that are in the scriptures of truth that reveal the times and the seasons and events that are going to take place before Jesus Christ comes back and they ain't going to take place according to the lying wonder Ralph Stir put forth all his years. I mean, my God, there's so many things, people. Well, this, this one, the, why am I focusing on Ralph Stir? Because it gives me an opportunity to present the truth and the scriptures of truth about the reality of the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ and at events and times and things that are going to take place before he comes back. Uh, let's listen to this now. Remember now, Ralph, according to James, what did James say? And the man of God spent his life getting the people ready for the coming of the Lord. Are we not going to be ready? Are we going to dishonor him? Uh, they're not, they're, whatever. Are we not going to be ready? Well, you'll hear the confusion and perversion that comes out of James Wright's mouth even lately. But let's listen to this latest phone call that the, this is a listener from the Overcomer broadcast. Remember now, Ralph Stair, Gordon Stair, because he grew up in a religious realm, that he was schooled with how to make money and how to expand his radio outreach like he did on shortwave radio. And then he got certain people disillusioned by sending them millions of dollars to promote his perversion, to promote his, to promote his sexual escapades. Hey, they, they that know their God shall be strong and do sex exploits, and that's what Ralph Starr did his whole life, basically. But the thing is, is he, he, he mesmerized and deceived Many people in the giving a lot. Ralph grew up in a in a in the realm of the charlatans, the uh, soothsayers, the perverters of truth, throughout the sixties and seventies, fifties, sixties, and seventies. And he often said how he learned from them, just like like the one man he used to send out. He'd send out a dollar to people, tell them they need to sow back money, and he'd end up getting like. Because he sent out ten thousand dollars in one dollar bills, he got back hundreds of thousands of dollars from people. See, there's there's ways you can manipulate people so easily. 
in this perverted generation because people are covetous. They desire money. They, they, they want to be rich. So they figure if somebody tells them, hey, if you give $10, God will give you back 100 a 1000 Hey, God does do things like that. But to your own destruction, people, he will open up his hand and satisfy the desire of every living creature or being. Every living thing. Well, would you, all right, let's listen to this phone call again of a, a late, the latest uh, listener about how these people are left in derision and delusion. Because, you know, I'm still waiting for this time to come. I don't know what all the steps are going to have to be taken to get to that point. And um, they're talking about Elijah sitting before. I don't know if he's going to make himself known. No. Just right there, he mentioned about Elijah making himself known. Ralph always put out that he was Elijah, but he didn't, he, he wasn't time for him to speak it yet. Okay? What a perversion. Ralph wasn't even close to being a nothing like Elijah at all. Well, let's listen to this listener again and his phone call. This is one uh, James Rice just recently made comments about. So far, I have not heard anything about anything like that yet. And so I, I right, he hasn't heard anything about Elijah. I will send my messenger before thy face to prepare a way before me. Then he went else there did. He made people not, well, this is one of his listeners now. He's supposed to be, what did James Rice say? And the man of God spent his life getting the people ready for the coming of the Lord. Spent his life getting, now why is this man in such confusion and derision about the actual coming of Jesus Christ? He actually mentions it because he listened to the broadcast here and he mentions about Elijah. Now listen to what the, the brother says here. I don't know what you're all doing. I don't know what's happening. It's such quietness. I won't hear anything. Yeah, because they can't promote the lies that Ralph was been putting out for years. As we'll get to him here in just a minute. Uh, They're being so quiet for. Cannot they see and talk and think to me what is happening going on in, around here? Gosh, you know, in the past, he used to be up to date and build the news and explain how things are going and what's happening and what to expect next. And now all he was three piece from the past all the time and nothing ever recent. So I'm never going to step in his second spot and take over and continue where he left off and, and keep things running and keep things going the way it should be. So I know what to expect and what the heck can happen next. Because, you know, um, September is coming around and in the past, he said September is going to be the time and when all the three states come together, well, what does this September be that time? And would he be coming back this year? And in the past, he used to say, oh, it's going to come after my death. Well, it's been a whole year, two years now, and I think he died, and so far he didn't come back yet. And the only thing that comes to my mind is maybe he's giving extra seeking time. Now, if you ask me, that time should be pretty much inspiring. And no, that time never was going to come to pass to begin with because it was a lie, brother. Ralph Stare was a liar. He said that Jesus Christ was coming back within six months of his death, not after. It's very clear. God told him. God didn't tell. That's the whole thing about that. But let's go on with this brother's phone call here because it, it, that's how the, the, James Rice is playing the lying game. James Rice is going to the same hell Ralph Stare is. And, and, and it, I mean, come on, Ray, James Rice is walking in the same steps that Ralph walked in, as I'll, I'll get to that scripture about the uh, well-favored harlot Rose Larrabee that James Rice ended up marrying. Ralph's adulterous liaison and, and uh, his adulterous companion that brought Ralph to a piece of bread. And the steps of her past lead to death. Period. And that's where James Rice is headed. I mean, should be past the extra time you think by now. Now, when's he going to see it happen? How much more time, extra time, is he going to keep giving? Can you funny say that's it? I'm going to give up on this water and bring it to an end and stop all this evil wickedness, put the devil in his spot, and, and after a thousand years, you can completely treat it to an end? <laughs> that's what I keep thinking about, you know. Yeah, but see, my, my friend, you need to stop listening to the overcoming ministry and all the garbage and lies that they're putting out. And you need to seek God and his word. 
Read Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21. Read those chapters where Jesus talked about what's going to happen before he comes. And then line them up and ask God for understanding and wisdom to line up the word of God with the events that are take place. Remember now, Jesus said, when you see Jerusalem compassed with armies, know that the desolation thereof is nigh. As I've often said in the book of Daniel, I believe that desolation is going to be at the end of the, of the three and a half years, not the beginning. But the point is, is that these events Jesus spoke about. Now you got to line them up. What about the man? We'll get to, we'll get to the coming of Jesus Christ as Paul talked about, brother. Read Revel uh, Thessalonians chapter 2, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, and Paul explains in detail the exact coming of Jesus Christ and the events that must take place, and it's a timeline, exact and in precise, precise detail of the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. God will give you understanding, brother, but stop listening to the overcoming ministry because you're going to get nothing but confusion and delusion and derision. From men like Ralph Stair and James Rice. That's why they can't play anything present. They don't have the present truth. They're nothing but liars, deceivers. Evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Evil men like James Rice, that's still alive, but, and then you got the, the seducing spirit behind him, Rose Larrabee. Uh, all right, we're going to go on here. Remember now, I mentioned about how Peter, in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 13, starting at verse 13 through 16, talked about after his death. To always have the things in remembrance of what he spoke about after his death. What about Ralph? Let's see what Ralph said here. If I die like any other man die, then I have not been sent from God. Now, is that clear? If he dies, like any other man die, then he has not been sent from God. Okay? He died like any other man die. He didn't die a, uh, a special martyr's death at the hand of the Pope of Rome, like he said God told him would happen. He died in an adulterous bed with a whore. That's how Ralph Stair died, like any other man. He died like some man would die in a whorehouse. Same, same principle. Let's hear what Jeremiah says about men like Ralph Stair. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Let not your prophets and your diviners that be in the midst of you deceive you, neither hearken to your dreams which ye cause to be dreamed. For they prophesy falsely unto you in my name. I have not sent them, saith the Lord. Is that clear? That's a, that's a confirmation from God through Jeremiah about men like Ralph Stair. God has not sent them. Just like Ralph, his own words. Let's hear that again about what Ralph said. If I die like any other men die, then I have not been sent from God. And that's the truth, brothers and sisters. Anybody that's got the spirit of truth in them will clearly see this and turn from their delusions and their derisions under the influence of men like Ralph Gordon Stair and James Rice. Let's listen to what Ralph said right before he died in 2021. See, the devil is very smart. See, the devil does have a lot of people that talk to him. Yeah, like Ralph Stair and James Rice. James Rice is still talking to him. Ralph Stair is talking to him, talking to the demons in hell right now. Ralph Stair is in hell, the same hell that he said nobody was in. Because there are, when people die, they either go to paradise or they go to the living hell that God created for the devil and his angels. Now, let's listen. Now, this is only a few weeks before Ralph died, what he says here. And what they do, they talk against God. They agree against the truth. Have you ever done that? That's all Ralph done. <laughs> So, you know, there's that little cough that he had uh, clearing of his throat. James Rice has got the same kind of a uh, cough in his mouth. I got to watch that I don't uh, mock God, but that's all a man I'm ever did. Die. And if I'm not right with God, 
is what I appreciate. All right, remember what I said there now. I'm getting ready to die. All right, you hear and that? If I'm not right with God, he wasn't. if what I have preached is not true, All right. I'm a liar. See, what he had preached is not true, he's a liar? Uh, James. James. Well, brother, he said he was going to stand before the Pope. He talked about uh, uh, the... What did he talk about? He talked about many things. Uh, James, what did Ralph say? If he said what he pre, if he what he preached, what, listen to that again, James. God, if what I have preached is not true, all right. I'm a liar. Amen. And all liars, Amen. all, That's right. go to hell. Amen. So my reckoning day is here. Oh yeah. yeah, sure was. I reckon. See, I mocked God. I reckon. My reckoning day. That's how Ralph there used to mock the very word of God like that. My reckoning day is here. I reckon. It's like, like a joke. Yeah, his reckoning day came on April the 3rd, 2021, when God killed him, took his breath away. Period. But you heard what he said. If what he preached was a lie, he's going to be in hell with all the other liars, and that's exactly where else there is at this particular time. But you heard James Rice there. Uh, that was right when James took over the pulpit after Ralph died. He talked about going to see the Pope of Rome, uh, James. Well, brother, he said he was going to stand before the Pope. Uh, now, watch what, why didn't James go on to say, literally, what Ralph said about going to see the Pope of Rome that God told him for over 20, 30 years that he was going to go see the Pope of Rome? We'll get to the beginning of Ralph's there again here shortly and how, what a perverter the man was of the actual coming of Jesus Christ. Period, because that's what this is all about. The coming of Jesus Christ. And the death of the testators you see in the background there. All right? But the final witness is going to be the word of God. And Jesus is coming. And that is a true witness, brothers and sisters. This is a true witness that you're hearing of the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Not some fable. Just like Peter said. We have not followed cunningly devised fables like Ralph Stair and James Rice continue to put out. Let's listen to what James... Now, why couldn't James say what was going to happen at the Pope of Rome? He said he was going to stand before the Pope. Now, listen to this delusion. And basically, it's not delusion. It's the same way Ralph would think when he would try to cover up a lie. Listen to how he covers up the, where he doesn't even say what Ralph actually said about going to see the Pope. He talked about... Uh... Wait a minute now. He talked about, he talked about the Pope now. He talked about, uh, 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 I don't think I better say that. What did he talk about? He talked about many things. Hear that? He talked about, well, I better not say that he's going to go, he's supposed to die before the Pope, because he didn't. See? If Ralph Starr preached what he preached was a lie, that made him a liar, just out of his own words. Well, definitely, it, his words made him a liar. By our words will be justified, and by our words will be condemned. Let's go now to the actual coming. Remember now, I told that, I mentioned to that brother that they played his phone call, and the listeners are like that out there throughout the world, that hear this perversion that continues to go out from Ralph Stair's radio broadcast. They come past land and sea to make a proselyte, and they make them twofold more to chow to hell than they are themselves. Let's listen to what Paul said about the actual coming of Jesus Christ in Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians. Chapter 2. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit nor by word nor by letter as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Now, is that clear? Don't be soon shaken in spirit or by letter or word from us that the day of Christ or the day is at is near. Isn't that what we've been talking about? Ralph said the day of Christ was near, was at hand. He said that within six months of dying 
by the hand of the Pope of Rome that within that six month period after his death, Jesus would come. And he always based that on the uh, principle of John the Baptist was born six months before Jesus. But John the Baptist died over a year before Jesus Christ went to the cross. That's the say it, the Lord of hosts, people. Look it up in the scriptures and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. And the key to the time frame was the five loaves and two fishes. You look at the time frame of, the, of, of where that event took place in the five loaves and two fishes, and you'll see that it was right before the second Passover when Jesus began to minister those three years, three and a half years, whatever they were, about 30 years of age, Jesus Christ began to minister. And the second Passover was just after the second Passover was just after John the Baptist had his head cut off. Because if you look in the scriptures, it is clearly explained to you the event that gives the time frame of the beheading of John the Baptist. And that second Passover, it was right before it. So that put the death of John the Baptist a little over a year before Jesus Christ went to the cross. But not according to old Ralph now. That's why he always used a time frame within six months. And then he always used that same lying spirit. Well, we might not know we're in the tribulation until six months later or even at the end of it. No, God doesn't lie. It's impossible for God to lie. Impossible. And if God tells any of us anything, it better be the truth if we say God told us. Otherwise, it is a lie. It is an impossible for God to lie. Period. Praise God. Thank God for that. Because the truth is our shield and buckler. Every word of God is pure. And it is a shield unto them that put their trust in him. Praise God. Add thou not unto his words, lest he reprove thee and thou be found a liar. And then the scripture goes on. I like this scripture. I just got brought to my memory. It's right there. Because it says, these two things have I required of thee, O Lord, and deny me them not before I die. And that's been my prayer ever since I actually had this scripture lodged into my heart. Remove far from me vanity and lies. Just like you see me revealing through the spirit of light and truth the darkness that these men like James Rice and you hear Ralph Stare talking. Hey, if that light that's in thee be darkness, how great is the darkness, Jesus said. You hear the great darkness coming out of these men's mouths and spirit. But it says, deny me them not before I die. I refuse these, these two things I required of thee, Lord. That's been my prayer. Remove far from me vanity and lies. Wow. That's a beautiful scripture to lodge in your heart and pray. Give me neither poverty nor riches, but feed me with food convenient for us. And that's what God has been doing with us. He's been feeding us with food that has been convenient for us. Praise God. And, he, and, then, and then the scripture goes on to say, Lest I be full and deny thee and say, Who is the Lord? Being rich. Or lest I be poor and steal and take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. We don't want to do neither one of those things. That's why... It's better to be neither rich nor poor, but on an even balance. God likes an even balance, people. Let's go on to 2 Thessalonians now. Remember now, don't let anybody deceive you that the day of Christ is at hand because there are certain things that Paul goes on the list that must take place before the coming of the Lord. Let no man deceive you by any means. Amen. For that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first. And that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worship. Yeah, see, now that's what Ralph Sterr done. Basically. And he sat in the temple of God, claiming that he was greater than Jesus Christ, or God himself. That he was the comforter. We'll get to the scriptural perversion here shortly, but that listen to this. So that he, as God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things? And now ye know 
what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time? For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming, even him whose coming is after the working of Satan, with all power and signs and lying wonders, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish. See? And that's the way Ralphster died, with all deceivableness of unrighteousness. The man had pleasure like Balaam in unrighteousness. A lover of pleasure more than a lover of God. Of whom such you turn away from. Because they received not the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion. But for what cause? For this cause, God shall send them strong delusion. And this is the reason for the strong delusion that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned. Now, that includes those that follow in the footsteps and speech of men like Ralph Stair. Hey, if a ruler hearkened on the lies like Ralph Stair said he was a ruler and a judge, then all his servants are wicked. And I, named, I, I just named a few. James Rice, Maurice Spencer, Timothy Jones, and all the others that's sitting at what they call the tabernacle. There ain't no tabernacle. We are the temple of the living God. The tabernacle is something that they used in the Old Testament. Yeah, the tabernacle moved around with a pillar of cloud by day and a fire by night. But it doesn't say anything about that in the New Testament. It says we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. But you'll see, they, they're, whatever, they, they, they're people over there, Whatever, we'll get to that in another time. But listen to what Paul says here about the end of those that believe lies. Who believed not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. That was the cause, right there, for this cause. Who believed not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. All right. Uh, let's go back to what Ralph said again. Right before he died. See, the devil is very smart. See, the devil does have a lot of people that talk to him. And what they do, they talk against God. They agree against the truth. Have you ever done that? Hmm? I got to watch that I don't uh, mock God, but I'm getting ready to die. And if I'm not right with God, if what I have preached is not true, all right. I'm a liar. Amen. And all liars, Amen. all, That's right. go to hell. Amen. So my reckoning day is here. Oh, yeah. I reckon. Yeah, he didn't reckon. It's not at all. He didn't take it to heart, the words that he was speaking, even though he knew he was on his death, death, in death's grip, grips and grasp. He didn't take it to heart, people. He died, like I said, just like a man would go to a whorehouse. That's the way Ralph Stair died. Let's listen to James again. The other thing brothers and James said was counted all joy. Is that all right? That's right? Now, this is something he said here just the other day about Ralph. We have yet to get to that right response. And often now we talk about right response. Huh? A righteous response. I think this is a righteous response. If we've heard the voice of the prophet, we believe what the prophet has said. They heard the voice of the prophet and they believe what he said? No, he's a liar. Ralph, I'll get into the things Ralph said. And they didn't believe it because they have to lie about what Ralph said. Period. All right, um, here's another one out of Deuteronomy about men like Ralph Stair. And it shall come to pass that whosoever will not hearken unto my words which he shall speak in my name, I will require it of him. Now, did you hear what that just said about Deuteronomy? If a prophet speaks a word 
and the people don't hearken unto what he actually says, God will require it of him, of the person that was spoken the truth to. But the prophet which shall presume to speak a word in my name. Now, we're we'll going on to Ralph. And then men like James Rice, but Ralph Stair in particular. Which I have not commanded him to speak, or that shall speak in the name of other gods, even that prophet shall die. And if thou say in thine heart, how shall we know the word which the Lord hath not spoken? When a prophet speaketh in the name of the Lord, if the thing follow not, nor come to pass, that is the thing which the Lord hath not spoken. But the prophet hath spoken it presumptuously. Thou shalt not be afraid of him. All right. That was uh, pretty clear what that said there. I'm just adjusting a volume here. But you heard what, what, that, what that said there. Uh, let's just let you hear that one more time. And it shall come to pass that whosoever will not hearken unto my words which he shall speak in my name, I will require it of him. But the prophet which shall presume to speak a word in my name which I have not commanded him to speak, or that shall speak in the name of other gods, even that prophet shall die. And if thou say in thine heart, How shall we know the word which the Lord hath not spoken? When a prophet speaketh in the name of the Lord, if the thing follow not, nor come to pass, that is the thing which the Lord hath not spoken. Uh, that's pretty clear. Especially that brother that that phone call I played. You heard it. If the thing doesn't come to pass, what Ralph Dare said, what does is, what is, what is God say? But the prophet hath spoken it presumptuously. Thou shalt not be afraid of him. You see, but that was the thing that I mentioned about Emmanuel Johnson's testimony. But here's another one that, that Brother Emmanuel wrote to me not too long ago. He said, Bless you, Brother Stan. Just a short note to let you know I'm hearing the messages and I'm being blessed by them. God has used you mightily to correct and expose so much of the false teachings that Brother Stair propagated for years and years. And you have backed up everything with Scripture. Well, that's our eighth. The Scripture, Brother Emmanuel, and everybody else out there, the scriptures of truth are our shield and buckler. The scriptures of truth are our, uh, our, our hope of the anchor of our soul. We hope in God. We trust in God. Hey, what did Abraham believe God? And it was counted to him for righteousness or imputed to him. And that's what we need to continue to do is believe God in this time of delusion and deception because it's, it's, it's just everywhere. Praise the Lord, brother. He goes on and says, I can tell you it's such a blessing to get an alert when you post a new video. I have a hunger for truth, and that's all I get from this ministry that God has entrusted you with. I know I'm not the only one who is blessed by these messages, so I just wanted to encourage you and to continue to do God's will. My prayer is that you remain faithful and faint not. I thank God for the deliverance he has wrought in me through this ministry. Through this ministry, God has cleared up and corrected years and years of false teachings and errors that I erroneously held on to from R.G. Stair. So God bless you and keep you as my prayer. God bless you, Brother Emmanuel, and keep you as my prayer as we continue to go on with these messages as God puts it in my heart to speak like he does. We just thank God for his deliverance. And the anointing will destroy the yoke, the anointing of truth, not the anointing of Lucifer or Satan himself that he put on people like Ralph Stair. Um, all right. Uh, here I'm going to let you listen to, you heard that one in Deuteronomy. Now let's listen to another one in Deuteronomy about men like Ralph Stair, James Rice. And Rose Larry. There shall be no whore of the daughters of Israel, nor a sodomite of the sons of Israel. Thou shalt not bring the hire of a whore or the price of a dog into the house of the Lord thy God for any vow, for even both these are abomination unto the Lord thy God. And that's what it was. They were both an abomination to God, Ralph and Rose, and now you got James and Rose. They're both an abomination. A whore and a sodomite. And that's one thing that Ralph Stair engaged in for God knows how many years. 
was a sodomite sexual perversion for many, many years. Just like I often mention, you, you don't watch pornography for the amount of years that Ralph Stairs did and say that you're right with God or even born again. No, God wouldn't allow that at all. He doesn't allow that. The spirit of divine grace teaches us to deny our godliness and worldly lust and to be able to live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world we live in. Not to continue in sin that grace may abound. God forbid. But Ralph Stair was a fool. It's like James Rice and all the others that follow in the footsteps of Ralph Stair. All right, here's another thing. Look at that gravestone. I just reminded of it. I shall return. No, the only time Ralph Stair is going to return is when God brings him up out of hell, when death and hell will deliver up the dead that are in him at the end of a thousand years. It says, and then shall death and hell be delivered up the dead that were in him, and they shall be judged according to the books. That's when Ralph Stair is going to return, people. Not in this, not at the coming of Jesus Christ, as I'll get to some more perversion of his uh, profound revelation of the saints being resurrected and jumping around the last 45 days before Jesus actually comes back. Wow. Let's hear what Kirk said in a recent message about men like Ralph Steer. Fools rage and are confident. Satan rages at God. Satan rages at God. Now, before we go on with this, what it is, We'll go to that screen. But Satan rages at God. In fact, let's go to this one. Because there's a pretty good picture of Ralph in his rage. And you hear the, the, the raging in his voice at the people. It's, I'll, you'll hear it in the clips. God damn you wicked people. But Satan really rages at God. Listen to how Kirk explains it. I'm going to read another scripture. The foolishness of this man perverted this way, and his heart fretteth against the Lord. You know what that fretteth means? I told it before. It means to boil up and to be angry. So what is he doing? He, is he raging at? No. His real means is he's raging at God. Something inside of the fool that hates God. I told you in Romans chapter 1 that there's a hater of God. Now, how many times have you heard Ralph boast about how he used to tell God to go to hell? There's something in that man's heart that made him rage and hate God. Haters of God, as it talks about in Romans chapter 1. Hates God. What is it? What could it be that would cause a man to hate God? But all the time professing to know God and professing to be wise and professing to serve God. You hear that? All the time professing to know God. Did you hear that, what Kirk just said there? Wow. You're the fool that hates God. I told you in Romans chapter 1 that there's a hater of God. Before, it means to boil up and to be angry. So what is he doing? He, is he raging at? No. His real means is he's raging at God. Something inside of the fool that hates God. I told you in Romans chapter 1 that there's a hater of God. He hates God. What is it? What could it be that would cause a man to hate God? But all the time professing to know God and professing to be wise and professing to serve God. All the time. How, how many times have you heard Ralph say, God talks to me now. He told me about this. He told me about that. Professing that he knows God. What does it say? Unto the pure, all things are pure. Unto them that are unbelieving and defiled is nothing pure. Even their mind and their conscience is defiled. Professing they know God, but it works to deny him. Being abominable and disobedient. And unto every good work reprobate. Let's go on with what Kirk said about men like Ralph Stair. He's like the Pharisees were professing to know and serve him. That's he said, it. you hate me. So he hates God. What is it? It's the spirits in him. Mm -hmm. It's the spirits that rage against God, and they know they can't touch God. So what do they turn to? They turn to whatever they can rage against. And what is the next best thing aside from God to rage at? And the number one next weapon, the number one next target they got is man. Because man is created in the image of God, and especially the sons of God, because they are partakers of the divine nature. Yeah. They are partakers of the divine nature, and that's why he zeroes in on it. Satan rages at God. Satan rages at God. That's right. He zeroes in on the sons of God. Praise God. Remember now, we're talking about the perversion that Ralph Stair has done throughout the years about the coming of Jesus Christ, because that's what we're going to get into here shortly. Uh, 
different ministers have different things they deal with. Amen. Just like Brother Terry, he's got certain things that he deals with more than any other thing. Hey, probably the preeminent thing, the coming of Jesus Christ. All right. The preeminent thing, the coming of Jesus Christ. And that's basically what Ralph used to draw us to him at the times that we were drawn to him. Was the actual coming of Jesus Christ. That's basically what it was. But yet he perverted it. He spoke with authority as far as using the scriptures like he did because he learned throughout the years how to do that, how to get people's attention by quoting and, 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 and using the word of God and holding it in unrighteousness, but yet he would actually quote the very word of God. I'm telling you, the man was schooled for years. I thank God that I did not grow up in a religious realm. God kept me aside from all that religious perversion, no matter what kind of church it was. But then he gave me a born-again experience back in 1993. Thank you, Father. Here's a scripture in Ezekiel that talks about Ralph Stare and men like him that do what Ezekiel said they would do. Chapter 13. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, prophesy against the prophets of Israel that prophesy, and say thou unto them that prophesy out of their own hearts, Hear ye the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God. Woe unto the foolish prophets that follow their own spirit, and have seen nothing. O Israel, thy prophets are like the foxes in the deserts. Ye have not gone up into the gaps, neither made up the hedge for the house of Israel to stand in the battle in the day of the Lord. Now, is that pretty clear what, that, what Ezekiel just said right there? Preparing a people for the coming of the Lord. You have not gone up in the hedge or strengthened their hands in the day of battle as to the coming of Jesus Christ. And that's what, what, what Ralph, he was, uh, let's see here if I could open this one up uh, on a different player. I don't think you folks are going to hang around me too much longer. I don't believe you're going to do it. You're always taking issue with what I say to make the people ready. How do you do that? Yeah, he didn't know how to do it. That's for sure. How do you do that? Making the people ready? It's just Ezekiel was pretty clear what he said there. They have seen vanity and lying divination. Say wow. Isn't that remarkable how that right there, they have seen vanity and lying divinations? When I said that, I quoted that scripture, that God lost in my heart here several weeks ago. Remove from me today. These two things I require of thee, O Lord. Deny me them not before I die. Remove far from me vanity and lies. Give me, give me neither poverty nor riches, but food that is convenient. Hey, what did Paul go on to say? With food and raiment, be content. Praise God. Saying, the Lord saith, and the Lord hath not sent them. All right, let's listen to that again. They have, made, they have seen vanity and lying divination, saying, the Lord saith, and the Lord hath not sent them. And they have made others to hope that they would confirm the word. Have ye not seen a vain vision? And well, did you hear that? They made others hope to confirm the word that they haven't even seen. Because ye have spoken vanity and seen now, to vanity and lying divination, saying, listen. The Lord saith, and the Lord hath not sent them. Right. And they have made others to hope that they would confirm the word. Have ye not seen a vain vision, and have ye not spoken a lying divination? Wow. Whereas ye say, The Lord saith it, albeit I have not spoken. Uh, that's exactly what you heard Ralph do throughout all the years. I'll get to Ralph's beginning here in a little bit about the coming of Jesus Christ. That God never told him ever. God clearly said he never spoke to Ralph's stare. Therefore thus saith the Lord God, because ye have spoken vanity and seen lies, therefore behold I am against you, saith the Lord God. Amen. And mine hand shall be upon the prophets that see vanity and that divine lies. Amen. They shall not be in the assembly of my people, there we go. neither shall they be written in the writing of the house of Israel, neither shall they enter into the land of Israel, and ye shall know that I am the Lord God. That's right. Neither shall I be written in the Lamb's book of life. And if his name was ever written in it, it was blotted out very quickly. Talking about Ralph Stare and James Rice himself. Now let's listen again to uh, what Ralph said quite some years ago. 
And then what he said right after it. And so Jesus said, let no man deceive you by any means, no matter what method he uses, if it doesn't turn people away from sin and turn them to the true and the living God and bring them to the glorious truth of God's mercy and grace and forgiveness, if that doesn't do that, it is evil, it is wicked, I don't care how good you say it is, it is wicked. Yeah, that's, that's, that's an example there of how Ralph used to talk, yet he was a hypocrite in his speech. Because listen to what he said about, he just talked about turn, if you don't turn people from their sins. And that, he, he, basically, at times, I'm sure people have turned from their sins by hearing the actual word of God, but not the spirit behind it that Ralph put in it. Now, let's listen to what Ralph said about sins. That's why folk don't like me. Because I tell you, sins don't mean a damn thing. Uh, just the opposite of what you heard just before that. But that, um, I'll go back to the phone call again. Because, you know, I'm still waiting for this time to come. I don't know what all the steps are going to have to be taken to get to that point. And, um, they're talking about Elijah sitting before. I don't know if he's going to make himself known. Because so far, I have not heard anything about anything like that yet. And so I, I don't know what you are all doing. I don't know what's happening. It's such quietness. I won't hear anything. What are you being so quiet for? They, they, that's the only thing they can do, my friend. They can't speak the truth or the present truth as Rice pops off now. That he's got the present truth. Uh, the truth is, my friend, you need to turn off the overcome ministry. Period. And people need to just turn away their ears from the lies and perversion that are going out from that ministry and listen to the very word of God. Like I mentioned, Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21. These are all scripture references to the actual coming of Jesus Christ and the events that must take place before he comes, because I will get into it in detail here shortly. But that's what you need to do, my friend. You cannot leave seeing and talking, speaking to me what is happening going on around you. Gosh, you know, in the past, he used to be up to date and go the news and explain how things are going and what's happening and what to expect next. And, now all he was three peace from the past all the time and nothing ever recent. Yeah, and they're not making the people prepared for the coming of Jesus Christ. Especially when you're 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 playing all kinds of past events like the man just said there. But you know, uh James, let let me go end this with James and then we'll go on to something else here. But let's hear this. You know, as much as we talk about uh, the heathen and you know, they hadn't received the prophet, and they hadn't done this, and here we at, are we, we have, and we, we're worse off than they are. If you heard the voice, you received the witness, then live like it. Well, did you hear that now? You heard the voice, you received the witness of his lies, so live like it. That's what they're living like. They're living like the lies that Ralph preached. Because he said if he didn't preach the truth, he was a liar. And if he thinks that he preached didn't come to pass, they were a lie. But listen to James here. Is that wrong? You better believe it's wrong to live like Ralph taught you how to live. Uh, let, let me do that one over again. You know, as much as we talk about uh, the heathen and, mm -hmm. you know, they hadn't received the prophet and they hadn't done this, and here we at, are we, we have, and we, we're worse off than they are. You better believe it. If you heard the voice, you received the witness, then live like it. Is that wrong? Uh, what kind of witness did they receive? They heard a voice of all the things. I'll get to a bunch of them here shortly of what Ralph actually said. They were lies. And they, they're they definitely living like the lies that they've, they've been listening to for years because they're living a lie themselves, people. Now, if 
You heard what he said. They heard the prophet and received the witness. And what did James say? And the man of God spent his life getting the people ready for the coming of the Lord. Are we not going to be ready? Are we going to dishonor him? Uh, Ralph, I mean James, they spent, Ralph spent his lifetime getting the people prepared for the, the coming of the Lord. But yet, James went on to say this. This is, this is how he picked the hypocrisy, the spirit of hypocrisy that went from J, uh, Ralph Starr to James Rice. Now remember now, they've been listening. They got the witness. They believed. The, they heard the voice of the prophet. But yet, listen to what they says about the end of the matter. And the end of the matter is the coming of Jesus Christ and a time that we live in before he does come back. And I don't know specifically the end of the matter, but I'm purposed to stay to the end. Uh, your purpose to stay to the end? But you don't know the end of the matter, yet you listen to the most profound preacher of the ages about the coming of Jesus Christ, and you don't know what the end is? You know, we, we think we know what's going on, and uh, for a period there was much talking about what was happening, and what God was doing and what was wrong here and what was wrong there. See, now what he's doing there, he's talking about the period of time, what was wrong here, what was wrong there, about Ralph saying Jesus would come within six months, all the feast days when they're in line up in September, that's the year that Jesus Christ is coming back. And then Ralph popped off here a few months before his death, it said, well, if Jesus don't come this year, 2021, it'll be another 11 years because that's when all the feast days were supposedly to line up again, according to Ralph's timeline of the coming of Jesus Christ. Just like Paul said in Thessalonians, don't be, let no man deceive you that the day of Christ is at hand by word, by spirit, or by letter from us because all these things must take place in Thessalonians chapter 2. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Period. But listen to what Rice here goes on to say. But as time went on, uh, the talk became less. Right, the talk became less because their, their, their truth was being shut down to the lies of Ralph and James Rice. Stop. Amen. 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 Because uh, we figured out that uh, we don't know. We don't know. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. See now, do you see how they rejoice over that? I often said, that's what Jesus said, hey, they knew not until the flood came, flood of lies came in, flood of perversion of spirits, and they knew not until the flood came and took them all away. Hey, if you keep listening to Ralph Starr, you're going to be taken away to the same place that Ralph's in right now, hell. The same place that James Rice is headed for. Uh, so let's, uh, we'll just, Let's see. I don't think you folks are going to hang around me too much longer. I don't believe you're going to do it. You always take an issue with what I say to make the people ready. How do you do that? See? Hear what Ralph said, to make the people ready? But then James goes on to say... You know, we, we think we know what's going on. And uh, for a period, there was much talking about what was happening and what God was doing and what was wrong here and what was wrong there. But as time went on, uh, the talk became less. Thank God. Amen. 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 Because uh, we figured out that uh, we don't know. We don't know. Amen. Hallelujah. Wow. Wow. What else can you say, people? What else can you say? When we're deceived, when we say what the devil said is what God said. That's the truth right there. When anybody is deceived, they say what the devil says, that God said it. And that's exactly what you've been hearing through James Rice and Ralph Stair. Yes, yes. Oh, God. Present truth, saints. Right. Well, yeah, we should play Brother Stair's recording, but we should have the present truth with it. Yeah, well, you, you can mark it down. James Rice don't have the present truth with what he's playing, replaying Ralph's broadcast. Because the present truth would surely shine the light on the darkness that Ralph Stair has spoken throughout the ages and years that he lived. Period. All right, let me close with this one here, James Rice. 
Uh, we all say that uh, we believe the prophet. We don't all maintain that we believe every word, but there are some that say, I believe every word. Ah, uh, wait a minute. What did James say? The other thing Brother James said was counted all joy. Is that all right? I wonder if he's using that name James because his name is James, huh? You mark it down, that's exactly what he's doing. Trying to trade credibility from the uh, from James, the apostle, to himself. But listen to what he says there about Ralph now. We have yet to get to that right response. And often now we talk about right response. Huh? A righteous response. I think this is a righteous response. If we've heard the voice of the prophet, we believe what the prophet has said. Wait a minute now. They heard the voice of the prophet. They believe what the prophet said. But then on the other side of his mouth, what did he say right here? We all say that uh, we believe the prophet. We don't all maintain that we believe every word, but there are some that say, I believe every word. See, he's including himself in saying, we don't all believe every word that Ralph spoke, but there are some that do proclaim they believe every word yet. He said he heard the prophet believe the witness, and they received a witness. And the other, man, you talk about a hypocrite, a, a lying devil. Of course, that's not true. Yeah, that's not. We don't believe every word God said. No, we don't. And that's the truth. They don't believe hardly any. They don't believe the word of God, period. Let alone that. But anyways, I'll just end this segment with that right there, and then we'll uh, continue on in the path of perversion that was laid out by Ralph Stair and now is being made even wider by James Rice. So may the Lord bless this truth to your hearts, brothers and sisters. May he deliver you from every stronghold of Satan in this hour we live in because we need to have the word of God as a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. The light of the just shineth more and more onto the perfect day. The light of the path of the just is a shining light that shines more and more onto the perfect day. And that's what God is doing. He's giving us more light to walk in so we don't have to be sidetracked by the darkness of this age. So may God bless the word of your hearts. In Jesus' name is my prayer till we meet again. Amen.